Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. So this night we, become, we come to Ash Wednesday service. We come and we remember not only that we are mortal, but that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. It's something that can feel extremely heavy, especially as we get older in our lives. But if we remember back to when we were younger, we didn't think so much about our mortality. We didn't think so much about what was coming down the road. There was so much ahead of us in life. There was so much hope to be had about what we would experience while we are here on earth. But as we get older, that reality of returning to dust becomes ever more acute. It becomes ever more weighty on our shoulders. And for some, it can become very hopeless feeling. And so tonight, as we celebrate Ash Wednesday, I don't want us to focus so much on the hopelessness of the end of life, but I want us to focus on the hope that comes with knowing that when we return to dust from this earth, we return back to the one who created us. We return back to the other side of eternity, and we return back to God. Despite who we are, and no matter what we've done or who we are in this world. For today, we heard that reading from Isaiah. And in that reading from Isaiah, Isaiah finds himself before the throne of God. And as he stands before the throne, he sees these six winged angels. We call them seraphim. And they're singing this wonderful song about God, the holy, holy, holy. It's the one that we sing every time we celebrate communion. And as Isaiah is standing there, and as he is gazing in awe at what is going on, he recognizes the fact that he is a sinful man, that he is not perfect, and that he is acutely standing before the throne of God. And it is in the midst of this utter hopelessness that he feels that one of the seraphim comes and takes a hot coal off of the altar and touches it, to Isaiah's lips. And in doing this, the angel says to him, your lips are made clean. You are made clean. Your sins are forgiven. Isaiah sees in this that God chooses to clean and cleanse those who he calls. He makes perfect those who he calls. He doesn't call the perfect. And knowing that, Isaiah knows that God is sending him out to share that good news with others, to share that word of hope with all that he comes into contact with. And so when God calls out, who will go for me? Isaiah says, here I am, send me. And so this Ash Wednesday, as we remember, not only as we enter Lent, but on this Ash Wednesday, that we are, in fact, sinful human beings, that we do, in fact, continually mess up, that God sends us regardless and in spite of the fact that we aren't perfect. He sends us with our hope out into the world so that we might share with others that same hope. And we remember the fact that it's not about what we do that brings our salvation, but it's about everything that God has already done for us, as we once again heard from the letter to the Ephesians. My friends in Christ, let this Lent be a Lent of hope. Let it be a Lent of hope in remembering the fact that God has cleansed you. God has made you clean in the blood of the Lamb and that God will welcome you back home when you do return to dust. This Lent, let us remember not only that we have sinned, but let us celebrate the one who has made us clean. And let us live in the hope of the good news of the gospel. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.